Good day everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about this air cooler coming from Scythe known as Fuma 2 Reversion B. Before I proceed, a big shout out to Yongkit. Thank you very much for loaning this unit to me and to share with all my viewers. I'll first start off with the unboxing and followed by the details on the heatsink itself and the accessories. Next, I will talk about how to mount this heatsink on the actual motherboard itself and I'll talk about the dimension. Let's begin. In this box itself, it contains the instruction manual. This is the accessory kit. The heatsink itself. Pretty massive. The fan. And I believe there is an additional fan inside. These are all the accessories that come in the box itself. Now before I go through the accessories, I'll start off with the heatsink. The heatsink is pretty massive as you can see. And there's this cut out over here. Now this is meant for you to mount at the back of your motherboard itself where your I.O. shield is. So make sure that you mount this this way. And this is towards the uh, RAM sitting area. So make sure you mount it this way and not this way. It comes with six massive heat pipe, all nickel plated, and a huge block over here. This is for you to contact the IHS. This is nickel plated too. And two retention screws for you to screw on the mount itself. And at the top, it's all black. And I kind of like the fins design, as you can see. It's pretty unique. And looking at the sides. This hissing itself does come with the uh, two fans, known as the uh, Case Flex 2. In fact, the correct pronunciation is Kaze in Japanese. And in Mandarin, it's Feng. It comes with a 15mm and a 25mm thick. 120mm fans and you can look at the blades they are different as in this will spin this direction this will spin this direction as I believe that when they are combined together on the hissing itself right you will channel more air through and the RPMs itself is rating from 300 lowest to 1500 RPM and looking at the wattage or should I say the ampere, amperage itself right is 0 0.08 ampere and 0.16 ampere so if you were to daisy chain them right not an issue they come with a splitter so you can combine these two fans together and plug this to your motherboard cpu header moving on with the accessory pack you have this long screw driver that's provided now what is this for if you do not have a long screw driver right let me just show you over here as you can see the retention screws over here and on the other side on the other end so they are kind of like sitting in so if you do not have a long screw right you can't reach the screw itself to tighten the retention on the mounting bracket itself so very thoughtful of them next you have six clips which two meant for your slim fan which is this to be fastened on your heat sink over this end Four additional clip, or should I say, two clip meant for the 25 mm thickness fan. And in the event, if you were to choose, like for example, if you were to slot 120 mm over here, and the 15 mm thick, and if you want to mount another fan over here, you can, not a problem. They have provided you the clip which is this so there are a total of six clips two for the actual 120 mm with 25 mm thickness and two additional and this is for the 120 mm slim fan as indicated over here you have a splitter fan splitter whereby you compare combine the two fans together and to clip this to your motherboard fan header 
the CPU fan header. It does come with a thermal paste. To prepare the mounting brackets in order for your heat sink to mount on the bracket itself, I'll briefly guide through, but you can refer to the manual itself. It's all written in details on how you do the mounting, be it the Intel socket or the AMD socket. I'll briefly guide through. If you are using an Intel which has a 2011 or 2066 mounting, you will be needing this four screws over here and this four bolts and with this brackets and with this spacer. I can't show you on the uh, 2011 and 2066 but I can show you on the 1200 and the uh, 1150 to 1156 socket. So what is needed is this back plate here. This is where you place at the back of your motherboard with the screw alignments. So once you've actually done that right, it's time for you to place the spacer. Now the spacer itself do take note that there are rubbers over here and the other end without. For Intel itself, make sure the rubber is facing downwards. So you place to this four screws. Imagine there is a motherboard, um, how say, above the uh, bracket itself. So you mount the uh, spacer. Once you've actually done that right, mount the brackets. Now this is used both on the AMD um, platform 2, platform 3 and the uh, Intel as mentioned all the 1200 1150 to 1156 you will need this. Make sure that this are inwards and not outwards. Outwards it will not work though you can clip to it. Reason being right if you do, do this your alignment of the uh, two retention screws will not align properly. See, it will not align. So make sure it's inwards. Once you've actually done that, use the four bolts to tighten it. Then you'll be able to mount your heat sink on the uh, bracket itself. Let me just show you. Okay, the alignment is just nice. Okay, let me just flip. See? It's just nice. Else, if you're using an Intel 12th gen, right, you will need to do some adjustment. Let me just take this out. On the bracket itself, okay, let me just take this out. You will need to take this housing out and to align, as you can see, there are two slot allocation. Move it towards the outer layer, or should I say the outer slot, which is like this. So do on all four screws on the bracket. Once you have done that, again, place the facer. Make sure the rubber is facing downwards. Then you'll be needing this set instead of this set. This are meant for your 1700 socket. And again, using the four bolts, tighten up and to secure the bracket in place. Then you'll be able to mount your heat sink. And to, just to show you, this is a line and this is a line. See? This is the AM4 socket itself. You will first need to unscrew this. There are four screws attached on the bracket itself. So remove the four screw, take out this. Using back the back plate itself, first thing you need to do to place the spacer itself. Now, for AM4, it's slightly different. Whereby you see this rubble here, 
this is not able to place down to your motherboard which is this way as this right is allocated for the um, screws over here or should I say the bracket over here so you can only go in one direction place the spacer once that is done right use this bracket now earlier on I show you the illustration whereby you use the Intel right this over here is facing in but for AMD AM4 is different you have to place it out instead and given the provided screws from this heatsink itself or air cooler make use of this slot it to the AM4 holes once you've actually done that align it and screw it in do the same on the other side this is done now make sure you don't tighten it too hard just hand tighten and it's firm leave it next we'll be placing your heat sink itself now before you place the heat sink make sure you remove this off this is just an illustration so I'm not going to take this off then align it to this two the retention screws align to the holes over here once you've actually done this right make use of the provided long screws I mean the screwdriver tighten this thing itself when you're doing this right don't screw one way do alternately this side after two rounds go to the other side two rounds that's why you're actually doing this because you wouldn't want the uh, I should say the plate itself or should I say the block itself where it sits on the IHS assuming that this is the okay assuming this is actually the IHS and this is actually the block itself you wouldn't want to tighten one end which is like that and then cram it down you make sure that it's evenly pressured on both ends that's why I do alternate now earlier on I mentioned that I've not taken out the sticker off from the uh, block itself by right you should take it out clean it with alcohol okay and then apply thermal paste before you mount the heat sink once you have actually done all this right next thing you need to do is to mount the fan itself before you mount your fan onto the heat sink itself make sure you find the orientation as in like where your CPU fan header is it's either to the top or the bottom if it's to the top where mine board here is to the top make sure you align the cables near towards the top on both sides because when you do the um, connection with the splitter itself right you should be on the top if it is bottom right then probably you will have to do it this way then upon the orienta orientation that you got correctly mount the clip which I've already done so once you've actually done right you can just mount it now the direction whereby the frame over here you can see this is where the air will push and will draw on the back so as you know that this way right is towards the back whereby you have the rear fan drawing the hot air out so I will push the air this way with the frame facing the uh, hissing so align it then clip on it and it's done same goes to this fan here at the meter now at the meter is a bit tricky whereby you have to pull this put it in align the height with your fun fan then you clip it okay this is what I meant by alignment let me just move this see it aligns once you've actually done this just to double check everything is secured then you can daisy chain or should I say click 
on the uh, splitter itself. Then probably you need to do some cable management to hide the cables because it's pretty long. So once you have actually done this right, clip it to your CPU header, or should I say the fan header, on your motherboard. Taking a closer look at the positioning of this his sink itself, there are plenty of clearance between the uh, steam fan to the RAMs, but if you were to populate another two more RAM stick right, it might be very close to your SIM fan. So take note on this. And also another thing to point out is that you might need to have the uh, height clearance of your case more than 160 mm. Because the measurement from the top to the motherboard is 160 mm. Now, levering this fin stack over here at the two sides is away from the IHS. The measurement from the motherboard to this fin stack is 45 mm. And at the back, there is a cutout. As mentioned to you, this should be placed at the rear where your IO is, or should I say your rear VRM. Reason being, right, if you were to change the direction from here to here and this to this, right, you might not be able to house the uh, hissing. And the measurement from this fin stack, the height to the uh, motherboard itself is 63 mm. Looking at the top, as you can see, there are clearance over here. So imagine that you slot another um, RAMs, populating two more RAMs, right? You might hit the uh, slim fan as mentioned. Measuring the uh, width from here to here is 130 mm. And from here to here, another 130 mm. Do take note that if you house another 25, sorry, do take note that if you house another 120 mm fans over here, whereby you have 25 millimeter thickness, you will add on to the uh, length over here, which is 155. Mounting the Sai Fuma 2 Ref B is pretty straightforward onto my motherboard itself, or should I say on the processor. The only thing that I dislike is only the cables over here. Though they are sleeves, right? But somehow it's kind of like stiff, very hard to bend. I wish that these are flat cables. But nevertheless, doing some cable management, right, I should be able to actually hide the cables. Speaking about the uh, thermal performance of this hissing itself, I'm going to do this on another video as I have a surprise for you. I will be competing this Fuma 2 against the uh, Deepcool AK620 cooler. And also the Thermal Ride Peerless Assassin 120 Black. So if you guys do not want to miss out the performance of this tree hissing itself, do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button. Till then, take care. Goodbye. See ya.